How's your winter going, Lise? Uh, it's been busier than I'd like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had been expecting to be in, uh, relaxing a little more at this point. Yeah. How about you? There's nowhere to go and escape, though. I know. Yeah. Although my kids did. Uh, my son went to Canada. Oh, wow. Abby went to New Mexico. Like for for a trip, or are they doing like a broad study? Or I don't know. One is yeah, they're both on trips yeah. um, with friends, and they did all tests before they went. And oh. getting into Canada, of course, you would think was hard, but we didn't think he was going to make it, but he did. So. Did he drive there? Uh, he did. Yep. Yeah. yeah. My car. <laughs> I think Liza is going to be there, be here. Yeah. Yep, there she is. Hey, Liza. Hi. Hi, Rick. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Chip. What are you talking? What are you doing? Trying to get Ricky Marshall in here. have a quorum uh i think that uh liza and steve and i are the only full members that's three that's a quorum right i think that's a quorum yeah should we get started all right um all right i have to pull up the agenda but i'm assuming it was minutes first yes minutes <laughs> Um, I was just making some uh, just some minor edits in it right now, just like make them to make them full complete sentences. There were uh, some that were just like shorter note taking ones, but I'm not changing the sense of it. Uh, I just did the first paragraph. That was all that I was looking at. But does anyone have any uh, see any errors in it? I I didn't find any. Okay. Where's Emily? She would find one. Oh, she. Oh. Uh, she can't come. She emailed me. Um, she can't come tonight. Yeah, not easy without her. <laughs> We're holding up the meeting. Yeah, I don't see anything major. Does anyone else see anything? No luck with Rick. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Um, There's nothing to do these days. What could he? <laughs> what could he possibly be doing? Uh, I don't know. When Steve calls me, I like answer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We to pick up. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Hi. Hi, Dan. 
Hey. You're just looking at the minutes. Okay. I don't know what happened to my pit picture. If you go to the bottom left. Oh, I see it, yeah. Hey. Hi. All right. All right, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Or I motion to move approve the minutes. <laughs> I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Moving along to uh, news about Concord Farms and Farmers. Um, one of the things that I wanted to, to start off with, is, I don't know if any of you get the news and notices, but there, there was a recent update about um, COVID-19 vaccines in Concord and the Board of Health is coordinating a lot of those. Um, and I know they're still in phase one, but ag workers are supposed to be included in phase two, um, not at the top of the list on, in phase two, but with other essential workers after I think folks age 75 plus and teachers. So, um, so one thought that it, uh, occurred to me is that we should maybe get in touch with the Board of Health and see if there's a way we can support them and, um, you know, getting ag workers vaccinated uh, in town. I was on a meeting uh, yesterday with the town manager. Oh, yeah. And he said the shots are being called by the governor and they changed from oh, day to day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he doesn't want to say what tomorrow's going to bring and they really... It's just a wait and see thing. Eh? No predictions. Now it's still uh, first responders and right. prisoners, I guess. Yeah, we're de we're still down the list. Um, but I, I wondered what you all thought about just contacting the Board of Health about, um, you know, finding well, out it, we can he, 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 yeah. his, his comment was, uh, uh, there's really no point to doing that because they don't know yet. It all comes down from the governor day by day mm -hmm. and they don't know where it's going to be tomorrow or the next day. Mm -hmm. Eventually we'll get there. Yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure that ag workers are, that they know how to reach us. You right. Know? Well, I think it's going to be announced and we have to reach them when that time comes. Mm -hmm. Well, if any of us here, maybe we can let the rest of us know. Yeah. Right. I mean, my feeling is it doesn't hurt to contact them and just say, hey, we can be a point person to reach out to the. Okay, the, that's you know. worthwhile. Yeah. I'm, I, I know that they are, don't know, don't have much information now, but I feel like it wouldn't hurt to. To make sure that we're on their radar mm. for, when, for when our time does come. Steve, was that a meeting that was about other things that it came up, or are you on any kind of committee that's working on? Uh, let's see. There's so many committees. Yeah. Uh, that was on the uh, trying to think of those a Concord Together meeting or. Another one. And anyway, that was his. Uh, oh, that that was the business partnership meeting. Uh huh. Um. So, so is everyone okay if I send an email to like Susan Rask and just say, you know, hey, we're happy to be a point person for helping to. Sure. To farms, great idea. Yeah. Okay. I will. I will get going on that. <laughs> cool. Um, any other news about Concord Farms and Farmers? How's your garlic growing? <laughs> Not luck, but I imagine it is. <laughs> <laughs> 
How's your garlic, Steve? I, I haven't looked either. <laughs> I haven't either. There's no point. I, I have an idea. There's no frost there, so. No. <laughs> there's, I drive by Walden every day, and there's uh, just a bare scum uh, of ice on part of the pond. Most of the pond is thought out now. Have folks ordered their seeds already for next season? Apparently, Johnny's has already discontinued selling to home gardeners except for three days a week. So uh, just be aware. I've ordered all my seeds. Yeah. Uh, and I'm getting started on my fertilizer and pesticides. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah we're going we're going to try to get a lot of the seeds all, off tomorrow. Joan already ordered some flower seeds that Johnny's out of. Really? Uh, yeah. I I don't think I've ever ordered them this early. Uh, I usually order fairly early, but I don't think I've ordered them this early. Uh, but uh, <laughs> they they you know. There's a lot of back orders, but there always are. So we'll see. I don't know if it was true of all the season, the whole season, but part of the season they were just done and closed. The, you know, the sort of homeowner individual seed orders, and we're just uh, selling to uh, to growers. Yeah, that's what that's what Johnny's is kind of doing now. They've limited sales to home gardeners to three days a week already. Wow. Uh, and it's pretty early in the season for them to have yeah. done that. Yeah, last year, and I think it was in April when Johnny's and High Mowing shut down all home gardener orders and just <laughs> were just taking commercial orders for a few weeks. That's good for plant sales though. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, maybe we should have all ordered more seeds. I did. <laughs> I ordered every seed they had. I just said, send me everything. I'm about to do my um, strawberry plant order. I'm curious what people um, find for their favorite varieties. I, I get them from Norse. I usually get three varieties each year. We always get Cabot. Cabot? Yeah. Yeah, I tried that a long time ago, didn't like it. Oh. Every year I order Dar Select and one other. I try Dar Select tiny ones. They I get tiny oh, ones. No, I, we we find that they 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 have done well and they, they're delicious and they're they're big enough. They're not like early glows or mm -hmm. um, so every year I try them and one other variety. And uh, I keep going back to that one, uh, and I haven't settled on the other variety yet. I've had good luck with Flavor Fest. It yeah, tastes I'm real good, and they've been pretty good size. Uh, Steve, what do you find is good in your <laughs> department? Mark just ordered the plants, and I'm afraid the varieties have slipped my mind. But uh, we had pretty good luck last year, and we were ordering the same ones and one of them we liked is not available so we're, I think he's trying something else but I, I can't tell you what it is you know I've tried I, mean, I don't know what it is or I would tell you <laughs> <laughs> I've tried their late varieties but they always seem to get really um moldy on Dar Select, not Dar Select, um AC Valley Sunset you know, you look at them and they say, oh, these will go till July, but um, they, they, they do go, but then they, they're, you know, highly susceptible to rot. I don't know if anybody's hit any that extend the season a little. Malwina, I, I tried that. Yeah, Malwina. I, I tried Malwina uh, a couple years back and it was amazingly late to the point where we thought it wasn't going to happen. Uh, and then it did, and the, the berries were extremely dark, like almost purple, um, and they were quite good, but we were too busy to do anything with them by that time. I mean, we, we have a strawberry season, 
And if the strawberries start coming in outside their season, we don't know what to do with them uh, because we got blueberries coming on, we got peas, we got, you know, so uh, we decided that uh, we don't want to go too early because you lose them all to the frost. Uh, and we don't want to go too late because we can't, don't have the labor, you know, we don't have enough people to pick them. I, I, yeah. I think also with pick your own, usually come the 4th of July, the, the weather's hot enough and people will pick some berries so the market for that drops off. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not going to push it. I, I have that same problem. If I keep picking berries late, then I neglect the peas. So yeah, oh yeah, you can't do both. It's just they're yeah. so labor intensive. Yeah. Okay. If you thanks. have a pea year, but normally you don't. You know, I thought I thought last year was going to be the best pea year ever, and then the heat just shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what happens every year, really. <laughs> Um, do we have any other news about far Concord Farms and Farmers? Should we move on to Spring Forum? Oh, hi, Jane. How are you? I just wanted to uh, let everybody know I'm uh, subbing in for, for Terry, who had to um, leave town unexpectedly. And um, uh, so just caught in. <laughs> so if there's anything I missed so far, let me know at the end. OK. Thanks, Jane. <laughs> Um, all right, so we, I, I think we should probably move on to discussing our plans for the, the spring forum. Um, I did get in touch with um, BJ's contact, Phil, at um, Minuteman News Network, Minute, Minuteman Media Network, not News Network. <laughs> um, and um, he was interested in coordinating with us. I, I invited him to come tonight. I'm not sure if he'll make it, but um, um, he did say we, one of the things that had been discussed was um, putting together a segment to show um, before we do our um, demos in late April or early May. Um, and, and he thought that that would be a tight turnaround for, for them to put something together before them, especially because there's not much to film until April. Um, but he was very excited about the idea of um, of uh, you know filming some of the demos that we're doing. Um, he said he could do we could, he could do it live, or if we wanted to do any sort of Zoom session, uh, um, a, with something more like the forum, but via Zoom, that they could broadcast that if we wanted to have a speaker. So um, so there's definitely some options for coordinating with them. Um, Does anyone? Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone? Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> would they? Would he be interested in like filming like a bunch of different demos and like editing it together as something that they that like we could have to show people or they would broadcast or something? Yeah, I think that's definitely a possibility. Yeah, it would be then. It would be broadcast excuse me, after later, he yeah. was editing it together. And I don't, I don't have a great sense of the, the time that it would take to edit that and put that together. So it may be that it wouldn't be until like June that something like that would be. That could still be useful. Yeah. yeah. It seems like a live broadcast of our demo. I won't speak for anyone else, but it might be really boring. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I might want some editing work to make it seem a little Oh, more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, here's a big field of dirt. <laughs> yeah. well, we we can all screw up a little bit and create some excitement. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember uh, Dan telling me he had friends um, uh, who were seating in the greenhouse with their, their you know, easy seater or whatever the vacuum seater is. Uh -huh. And they did this loop, you know, where they showed them seating and then, and, and it was just like this endless loop. And I thought that was hilarious. That is. Because that's kind of how it works, you know, yeah. you're, during, <laughs> during a certain time period, you're just doing the same thing over like and over. over, and like, over. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 
So in, inside the greenhouse might be uh, a place to get started. Oh. Um, you know, so yeah. that so that the guy isn't like just front loaded with everything happening in in April and May. Yeah, yeah. That's it'd, be nice, it'd be nice if it could be when we we're getting some things done out in the field. I think too. Yeah, yeah definitely. But yeah. but just to spice it up a little bit, or or yeah. to make it so it's not so concentrated during one period of time. Yeah. No, I, I think we should consider some Boston channels too on it. Do you have any connections, Steve? No, but I probably could find some. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so, so when we had originally talked about this idea, we had been thinking, you know, over the course of a week, kind of like how we did Ag Week in the fall, but it sounds like you know, if we wanted, it could be spread out even longer, especially if we wanted to them to be able to produce like a segment show, getting a bigger picture of the farms. Is that? We could, maybe we could feature two farms a week for several weeks or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Um, and do signups for like all of them at once so that people would like, just so that everyone would have a chance at a spot rather than like, if we like opened it for one week and then closed it and then opened it for another week, we might not have a sense of like how many people are really planning on coming or like the same, I guess the same person could come to all of them if we had trouble finding people. But I, it feels like right now we're having the opposite problem of usual for events is like when we did the ad week thing, like the demand was way more than I thought it was going to be like the spots filled up and people were emailing like, can you put me on? It's like, oh, I, I could like, I didn't think that that would be, I mean, like, I didn't, I didn't think it would fill up as fast as it did. So I was just, I don't know if we'd want to like do the signups all at once so that we could have a better idea of spreading people out. Yeah, I don't know whether there's a possibility of doing that through a town site or not. Um, well, what we did last time was um, like Lise helped make the sign up genius sign up sheets and then Liza put them on our like Concord Ag Week website. That seemed to have worked all right, didn't it? Mm -hmm. um, my one concern that I would have about if we're doing it over several weeks, but doing all the signups at once, I, I do think that like momentum kind mm -hmm. of dies for the later ones mm -hmm. and that we might end up with like the later ones, people not showing up. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they uh, might show up for the later ones if there was uh, good feedback from the early ones. Yeah. I mean, we could email to confirm or something and then open slots, I don't know. Yeah. I think administratively it would be easier yeah. to have one big sign up for everything, so. Right. Right. There might even be more interest as it gets slightly nicer weather. I don't know if that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we have, you know, if some of the later ones don't fill up though, do we reopen signups or? Well, that's what I was wondering is if we could like keep, like open it all at once so that it was like fair in terms of what people signed up for, but then yeah, would it be possible to keep the later ones open if they weren't full? I think so. Like wouldn't it just like say that the early ones had filled up and then the other ones would just still be available? Yeah. Yeah, that's possible. And, and that way also, you know, if people email and say, oh, I can't actually can't make it, we can reopen spots too. So, so that people could still sign up if, if anything opens up later. Yeah. Do folks have ideas of the types of things that they would like to, to demo on their farm or? 
or, or do a tour of? Spraying pesticides. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. We use this Tyvek suits and we're our <laughs> everybody we're kind of worried. <laughs> we're like, you know, we're not right on route two. So it's like you know, we're an organic field and you see a guy with, with uh, a mask on and a Tyvek suit. It doesn't seem like it, it just bursts the whole bubble. <laughs> Um, one of the things that we were interested in doing at Barrett's Mill was um, like a field seeding demo. Um, uh, like our our process of how we, you know, prep the beds to seed, and then the we use walk behind seeders. I was gonna uh, say you can all watch and laugh at us as I push <laughs> down every row that we want to plant. Doesn't it? Doesn't it mean? Doesn't it matter if you just, maybe you should just put really good music to it. Yeah. yeah. That's why I want the editing, not the live. It's gotta be slow music though. Yeah. <laughs> or you could be moving really quickly behind it. Like just. Uh, or you could speed up the film, I guess. Yeah. Right. We should get um, <laughs> um, Foreman's son who did that video that I sent out. I don't know if any of you had a chance to watch it, but he did some like drone footage. And um, and I had some speeded up footage also too. <laughs> Ward used to set up a a camera on a tripod, and he would plow a field, and, and he would do a, like a time lapse. Oh, and cool! It was it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I would like to show off like the carousel planter, uh, yeah. just because it's so interesting. Yeah. Uh, it, it, unless it's not working. <laughs> so. Can we send them away and have them come back? <laughs> Which is what I would like to do with my workers sometimes. It's not raining, but this is a we're we're doing the rain day. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's called using your iPhone. <laughs> yeah. I think hand planting is is an amazing thing. Yeah. Um, we do a fair amount, you know, just uh, uh, the, the, you know, we we dibble. Well, we make the beds. Uh, I'm assuming that will be done. Uh, but then we would take the dibbler down and then drop and and plant. Um, and uh, eventually people get really fast at it. Uh, so it's kind of fun if people could see that or participate in it. Mm -hmm. Great idea. I mean, we do the same. I mean, we do everything by hand pretty much. So, yeah. Um, but, and the see, I don't know, seating in a greenhouse would, I don't know, it's, I, like you say, I don't know how much time you'd have to put that on a loop because. Yeah. No, it's kind of boring. Right. <laughs> but it's interesting if you see it over time. Like, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh -huh. All right. How many iterations? Like we lost you. Growing. Um, does okay. anybody do? Um, oh, you um, yeah. Does I'll anybody, put you on does anybody do the flame treatment for the carrots? Yeah. That would be um, dramatic. Maybe. Yeah, we're actually buying. We just bought a new flamer. We used to do it with backpacks. Okay. Uh, but we bit the bullet and bought a. Uh, tractor flamer out of uh, Nebraska, I can't remember. Um, but we're hoping it's great. <laughs> it hasn't arrived how, yet. So. How did the backpacks work for you? Uh, they were great, except it's very labor intensive. And um, it's also very like the, how well it does is dependent on how well the people understand what they're doing and how interested they are in doing it correctly. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's amazing when it works. What we would do is we see three rows of carrots on a bed top um, and I always see my carrots next to my beets. And as soon as the beets start to like show a little red when you see them coming up, uh, then we think about getting the flamers out and we have two people with backpack flamers and they just walk along and they, all they do 
is flame right over the rows. So they're not flaming in between the rows, they're just flaming right where the carrots were seeded. Um, and if we're lucky, uh, the carrots come up like five minutes after we're done, um, which is the ideal, uh, which doesn't happen, of course. But uh, it does make a huge difference with uh, carrots and parsnips and things that really uh, take their time in germinating. Uh, and you can get, you know, and then you can go in with a, with a tractor and get the areas that the flamer didn't get. Uh, but people have to do one row at a time and they have to go slow and it's, it's laborious. So we bought, uh, this year we invested in a flamer that hopefully will do the whole bed top. Wow. Does that, does that have a hood over it? Uh... Yeah. Yep. I it's, uh, it's called the AFI is the company. We have one we got a long time ago without a hood. I build a hood for it and everybody thinks it's too much, uh, too hard to maneuver, so they throw it out. <laughs> I need about half the fuel with the hood. Yeah, I, I thought the hood was necessary because uh, wind and uh, things like that can make a huge difference in how effective it is. Uh, but the hood concentrates the heat, lets you go a little bit faster. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see this thing. So we'll, we'll see how it works. What kind of money? It's like they, a bomb. What kind of money were they charging for something? For that machine, uh, I think it was like, was it like seven grand? Six oh. grand? It was like seven thousand, I think. Not bad. Uh, it has the ability. So, we bought one uh, for a six foot wide bed, so that we can get the whole bed top. Uh, but you have the potential to also uh, flame uh, corn or beans or something that's already up and growing uh, where you can change the configuration of the hood so that the crops will, you know, the shields will just, you know, go in between and we'll see how that works. I mean, that's, that's not the reason we bought it, but if we, if we were able to use it for that, it'd be great. Potatoes. We, we use ours a lot on steel beds too. Yeah, that's what we want it for. That's, that's the main reason. And theoretically, you can use it for potato beetles too. Oh wow! If you if you have a strong stomach, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this smells pretty bad. No, no, no. I mean, if you're like not scared uh, about right. destroying your crop, right? Yeah. Which I would be. This last year, I want to give that job to somebody else who doesn't care as much as I do. <laughs> Did everyone have a big problem with with them last summer? I had almost none. Oh, we had, they, they really just, our um, eggplant, they were just brutal. I mean, here again, we do everything very mechanically by hand. So literally we were out there every morning for several days, like throwing them in soapy water and, and taking them off the plants. But I think it has nothing to do with weather or anything. It just has to do with what you grew and how well you can rotate. Yeah, see, we're pretty small. Unlike other pests, lots of other pests are defected by weather, but those guys, it's like, if you grow your potatoes near where you grew your potatoes last year, then you're screwed. Just out of curiosity, um, on carrots, do you use the um, pelleted or do you use the um, not pelleted? We, uh, we use both, but I find the pelleted gets ground, ground up in our we use a planted junior cedar, yeah, uh, three row on the back of a tractor, and they just get ground up. So it's like, why even bother? Do you wind up uh, watering them frequently to get them to germinate? I wasn't getting much germination last summer. Yeah, we wind up not having them germinate. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the answer I was looking for. I know. Yes, we need to water them more. <laughs> you need to be in a position where you're able to water them consistently for the first two weeks, at least. Uh, and we, you know, we just never do it. So, or and haven't done. Drought last summer. So. Last summer was tough. Yeah. 
So are we going to get two demos from Hutchins, one of the carousel planter and one of the... Well, the flamer, what if it blows up? <laughs> we, we haven't used it yet. We don't even know how to work it. When you sign up for that demo, you have to sign a waiver. <laughs> you have to sign a waiver. <laughs> it's like a big giant bomb. <laughs> and somebody explain to me what a flame... Um, it's a flame. propane. So it's propane torches. So mm -hmm. the simplest way I, I got to do that. It, but why, how does that help things, uh, how does it help carrots? Okay, so carrots take, generally, they take about eight days to germinate, but all the weeds come up in about four days. Uh, so if you go out and you make your bed and you seed your carrots, and then you wait until most of the weeds have germinated, and then you go and you take a propane torch <laughs> and you flame over the top of the bed, and if you time it just right, you can actually uh, have it so that the carrots are coming up in an absolutely pristine, weed-free environment because you just flamed it the day before. Um, and that's wow. how it works. And you can also do that for other things, uh, but things that take a long time to germinate are the, the most, um, uh, you know, they're, they're the clearest candidates for, for that kind of thing. That sounds like something that there are a lot of high schoolers that would want to see. Uh, my son, absolutely. He, well, he thought it was great until he had to do it for like hours on end. <laughs> but yeah, initially they, it's like, oh, flamethrower, yeah. But then it's like, ow, this hurts. Oh, that's hot. Oh, my boots are melted. <laughs> Steve, did you have something? Well, I just got to say, it's very important to do it about 10 minutes before the carrots come up. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I said. <laughs> exactly. The other did problem, we lose, did we lose Steve on the video? Yeah, his computer froze, so he's on my speakerphone right now. Oh, okay. The thing is, sometimes the carrots, you know, some of the carrots start to come up because we're growing different varieties. They're different parts of the field. And so you have to make a judgment and you have to dig around a lot. You have to make a judgment whether uh, you're going to kill more carrots or you're just going to thin them uh, with the flame. Uh, are you going to kill more than it's worth uh, killing the weeds? Uh, but sometimes if you don't do it, the weeds will overcome your carrot planting to the point where you're spending so much money on hand weeding that your carrots are have negative value. I, it's interesting. I've done some test plots. I'll skip a few feet at the start of a row. And if you might see, say, uh, 50 weeds per square foot that are just sprouted where you're doing it and you leave a test plot and you find that instead of 50 you had 400 come up there, there are a lot that you don't even see that uh, just have the uh, tiny sprouts that are invisible but the flamer kills them and they don't come up so you, you're killing a lot more weeds than you're looking at yeah absolutely and also, the weeds somehow know, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't really claim this, but I feel like the weeds know, uh, weeds are like bullies and they recognize that carrots are wimps. Um, and so they, they will actually germinate much more profusely in your onions and your carrots than they do in your squash and your cucumbers, which can fight back. And I think that's absolutely true. I don't know how they know, but it's true. This, this is starting to sound like, you know, a, a movie plot, you know, where the, the <laughs> carrots and the onions and or the onions and the cucumbers fight off the bad weeds so the carrots can live. Right. Well, the onions can't fight the weeds off. The cucumbers can. Hey, maybe you could help produce the segment. I feel like Minuteman <laughs> Media make these notes and really make it seem more exciting. I will certainly offer some editorial content. Okay, great. <laughs> I don't think they would get along. Yeah. No. <laughs> it, well, one of the first years I was doing this, I we have this overhead watering, the you know old-fashioned aluminum pipes, and I went to the, the gas station to get a coffee. I had the watering going on. 
and I was walking back towards the field and I see a geyser in the middle of the field. One of the pipe um, heads had blown off and so I walked down there and there's like a stream of, and it literally stream of carrots leaving my feet <laughs> it's like through the erosion. So your Jane, your idea of a plot, it's like I could see the carrots like flying down this smooth <laughs> way. At first I saw it and I thought, oh, that's really pretty. <laughs> it's like I got there. It's like what a disaster. <laughs> They were fleeing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so Dan, do you have um, anything that you'd like to show off at Walden Woods in, in the spring? Well, I think it, it kind of it depends on what, I mean, I'm going to have to look in a calendar and try to figure out, but I mean, obviously some hand planting might be fun. Um, um, stuff in the greenhouse like we were talking about might be a little bit boring, but I mean, we're, we're not really using it that much anywhere more, but we could break out for, for a long time. We used a planet junior for, um, you know, our rose seeds, pull that, pull that out and put some seeds in that way. Be one thing. Um, I don't know. Like putting in raised beds, but that's something I don't know. That's the part I feel so ambivalent about. It's like, you know, they're very useful, but I mean, it's like putting all this plastic down. I don't know if that's something to showcase, but. Mm -hmm. Who might be interested? I mean, we use plastic on top of, in, you know, Hutchins, we, did, we use it as mulch, so. Right. Um, people are always interested in what it does and, you know, why it's helpful and... And there are biodegradable mulches, even though we're not allowed to use them, but there are right, right. some out there. You're allowed to use them, you just have to pull them up at the end of the season. No, you're not allowed to use them. You're not allowed they're to use them at all, really? They're not really biodegradable. What? They're not really biodegradable. Yeah. What are they? It's only the glue that holds the plastic pieces together that's degradable. Oh, that's even worse. So you're ending up with a field of of, of plastic particles. That sounds pretty bad, actually. Yeah. Grace, do you have? Do you all have anything that you'd um, like to do a demo or a tour of in um, in the spring? So our thought was definitely going to be hand planting, considering we do everything very old fashioned. Mm -hmm. our, our newest thing is probably 75 years old. So we're going to do it old fashioned hand planting. Great. And it will not be carrots. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we're, we're not sure about we, you know, we haven't really thought it out yet, but it's not going to yeah. be carrots. Definitely, e -e, no. <laughs> yeah, it'll definitely be some. We can even showcase. You know, we can do some spring seeding, but you know, we don't have the the vacuum. We've got this little teeny tiny round little tapping thing. Yeah. So we can we can do that, and we will need very slow music, like real <laughs> painfully slow. We're going to need a lot of speeding it up. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. we're the old fat, you know, just just to tap the little thing in the in the cell. So yeah. we that that we can do, and then <laughs> hand plant them out. It'll, you know, it could be like even scallion peas and anything, but it's definitely old fashioned hand. Yeah. I know this sounds crazy, but um, whoever's capturing the recording of this should send this to Minuteman. Well, they have it, but Minuteman should look at this because there are some fabulous ideas in here. <laughs> the other thing that just occurred to me is we have a, a fairly old, probably 70s uh, potato planter, um, which was, to me, it was an absolute revelation when I first got to Hutchins. Um, because uh, it does 
everything like in one one pass you know it uh, it puts the t uh, potato it digs a trench drops the potatoes in at a certain uh, spacing and then it uh, covers up the trench all in one uh, fell swoop um, and uh, we might be able to combine that I mean if, if, if we're doing video or something with some uh, cuts of people cu cutting the uh, potatoes mm -hmm. um, because that's something that people you know everybody eats potatoes um, yeah. Yeah. and they're not I don't think I think lots of people are a little bit fuzzy about how they come around you know how they come to be yeah and what it, what a potato seed is yeah that's a new planter you have we have an old one all right all right <laughs> i was going to get a newer one but <laughs> we'd like to but they had to find in two rows yes that's right we i found one but i couldn't it was in pennsylvania and i didn't want to drive it up I've been thinking about going up to a rustic. There must be some there. Oh yeah. I bet. Yeah. How do you hill your potatoes? Discs or or uh, middle busters? Uh, we do a lot of it just with a planter, and then uh, uh, we do some uh, cultivation afterwards. But you don't make big, big, aggressive hills, or we we plant them into the hill. We. I've never been able to quite figure out why they uh, always planted it into a hill and then flatten the hill off and then put it back again. <laughs> yeah. And, and that is what they've done. And I think probably it's to let the potatoes sprout up quicker and then put dirt back around it and it roots into the... Yeah, right. Because it, it warms up faster. Yeah. So we, we just plant them in a hill and pretty much let them go and then cultivate it up a little bit. Steve, do you have ideas for what you would like to do for a, a demo? Well, we have uh, several different planters and cultivating equipment. Uh, we could do a vacuum planter. Uh, we have a carousel planter. We have a planter that plant, uh, transplants through plastic. Um, we back in planter, we use the greenhouse for <laughs> lettuce and things every week. But quite a variety of cultivating equipment, maybe. Yeah. Cool. Are we thinking if we're going to spread it out over a couple of weeks? Are we thinking, um, you know, of starting demos in mid-April, perhaps? I think that's a little early. Yeah. So late April and have it go for three weeks. That... What do other people think? Yeah. Kind of look at a calendar. Yeah. My calendar's on my phone. <laughs> um, I think I have one on the computer. I don't know. When do you plant potatoes, Brian? Uh. We usually don't try to get too aggressive with it. Yeah. Um, so we usually let them sit there and sprout for a long time after, uh, and then we'll cut them and plant them probably in early May, something like that. So you, you run through the planter after they sprouted? Uh, we do because, I mean, half the time the seeds we buy have sprouted anyway. Um, and so what we do is we, uh, as soon as our, uh, we buy in, I can't remember how, we buy in about a ton of seed, I guess. And we just put them in um, crates where the air can get through and, and theoretically the light can so that hopefully the sprouts don't become these long white mm. uh, cave things, uh, but they'll become short, stocky green, things and then when we're ready then we'll we'll cut them and i'm sure we knock a lot of the sprouts off but you know a lot of times the sprouts are they're happening anyway so i hate potatoes by the way no i don't hate potatoes but I do. It's, it's when they do well i i love them but a lot of times they don't do well 
Yeah, we will definitely not be showcasing potatoes. Because <laughs> later on, people will be like, where are your potatoes? Yeah, <laughs> we sold them all, of course. Yeah, <laughs> So, so timing wise though, for, for the, what we're, what we're talking about so far, it, it sounds like, so April 26th is like the first, the last week of April. And then there's May 3rd and May 10th. I, I, my feeling is that maybe after then it's a little bit much to, it would be a little bit much for farms to still be doing demos just in terms of the amount of stuff that we all have going on at that point. But what do others think about that? It sounds like a good range. So like a three week kind of range with mm -hmm. two or three demos a week, depending on how many right. people want to yeah. participate. That's good. Chip, do you have anything that you'd be interested in showcasing? Well, I, I'm still trying to figure out what these demos are in the pandemic era. Yeah. Do you put somebody with a video machine or do you do it all on your little phones or what? Well, our thought was that we would have people sign up and 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 you'd make a reservation and and um, and then so there'd be a limited number of people that would come to the farm, and and the farm could set the the maximum number of people that they'd want. But it it also could be if you don't want people coming to the farm, then it could be um, you know we could see if Minuteman Media Network would come and film something at your farm, and and that can be added to the mix. You wouldn't have to be open to the public if um but the basic thing you're talking about is having people come and watch you do something yeah <laughs> yeah so watch us do something at the time but then also minuteman media network would be filming some to include it in like a, a segment about all of the the demos so it would have wider distribution yeah than just did you actually do this last year or is this new no. This is this is a new idea for since the the spring forum the the traditional format that we've used is really not possible in the pandemic. So our thought was to have. <laughs> yes. I think we didn't do anything last year, right? We canceled it because it was the yeah it was the state when it's locked down like two days before. Yeah. Well, you know, we plant um, strawberries, hands and knees. Um, and we plant corn once a week, but um, I don't really schedule it. I do it, you know, um, depending on the weather. You know, it's, it'd be hard to um, say, well, in such and such a day, I'm going to have a demonstration and then it rains or something. Yeah. How do you deal with that? I mean, you do schedule them in advance, right? Definite yeah. day, definite time. Well, I think that. Oh, we can have a rain date on them. Yeah. Yeah. We can have a rain date. And also it could it could be, you could say it's a planting demo. You wouldn't have to necessarily specify whether it was strawberries or corn. And it could be whatever you happen to be able to plant that day. And you're thinking um, entertain people for two hours kind of thing? Not two hours, I don't think. <laughs> well, I, whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Depends on how and <laughs> Well, um, let me think about it, but it's possibility. You know, we do plant corn once a week and um, we do plant strawberries. Takes about a week to get them all in. Mm -hmm. um, we plant pumpkins, you know, through plastic by hand, like Grace was saying. Um, but um, we wouldn't be particularly tied to the first three weeks in May. I mean, some of this stuff, you know, goes on um, into June. Mm -hmm. So if we do anything, it would probably be later rather than earlier. And the sure. other thing is I, I have um, mostly college students and, you know, I don't know when they're going to be available. Sometimes they don't appear until late, until middle of June. Sure. I mean, if, if there are folks who want to to do demos later in May, I mean, we could do that. But I know that we won't want to. <laughs> when when do you need commitments? Uh, I think that should we should we try to should we keep um, 
brainstorming about what we want to do and 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 we'll try to get in touch with folks like Ricky and um and you know try to recruit some other folks and and get some come back at the next meeting and talk about a rough plan I think if we want um if we want to start doing demos at the end of April we should probably have like a rough outline of what whose demo is going to be when at the next meeting so that yeah, would be maybe between now and then um you just try to pin down some media yeah, yeah. people that are willing to yeah, yeah i think it'd be good to discuss the next meeting and then nail it down in march yeah it might be nice if folks could would like um could send like a, like a sentence about what they would do or something so that you could say to the people we're looking to include who haven't done anything yet, like this is what people are doing. We could also give some ideas, like if people are worried about timing coordination, like you were saying, Chip, I mean, someone could just line up all their tractors and like, Lise has done like just tractor and equipment demos that aren't related to actually getting any work done like it wouldn't need a certain conditions or anything like you just like line up your tractors and uh like families always come to that kind of stuff just to look at them um and i don't think it's a problem too if if there's multiple demos on one topic because i think it would be really interesting to see how different farms yeah. do each we're all going to be basically doing the same thing yeah <laughs> yeah um Chip, do you think the folks at the greenhouse would be interested in doing? Um, possibly, I could talk to Chris Dooley. You know, the, the nice thing about the greenhouses is uh, they're nice and colorful. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's he's transplanting, busily transplanting all through um, to the middle of May, really. Um, it, you know, um, we had a real active greenhouse sales last spring. Um, I guess people are probably going to do it again this year. They're going to be interested in gardening. Yeah. So yeah, I'll I'll ask him about that. So it's a question of um, having a group of up to ten people for one hour, sometime in May or I think May or at late April. Is that what I can tell him? Yeah. 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 What we were just talking about was yeah the last week of April, April twenty sixth through. The second week of May, so that's the week of May 10th. Um, never, never rains in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, then we can all get out of it. <laughs> if you're in the greenhouse, you're, you're all set. Yeah. Well, the greenhouse, you got to wear a mask. I suppose if you're outside with a group of 10 people, you still got to wear the mask. Yeah. You know, when we were working outside last summer, we didn't do the mask because, you know, we're six feet away from each other. What what do you, do you guys find last summer with the crew of people? You all wearing masks all the time? Masks most of the time, um, always when we were harvesting. Um, but then like in the afternoon when it was on really, really hot days when we were on non-harvesting projects and if it was possible to be six feet or more apart than me, um, we would let folks take off their masks. But we also had a like, because we have pick your own and we were, being very on top of our members wearing their masks in the pick your own field, whenever we were working near them, even if it wasn't something that really required a mask on our part, we, we wore them. So we were setting the tone. <laughs> so we wore yeah, that's, them all the time. <laughs> that's what I found with the um, greenhouse. You know, we tell all our customers, you gotta wear the mask. But mm -hmm. if I'm walking around by myself, you know, I don't wear a mask. But yeah. as soon as I see a customer, whoop, put it on. mask yeah. goes on me so that they don't get demoralized. Yeah, yeah. The complication that we had was um, uh, getting people in vehicles and then going to where they were going. Yeah. So they, ha you know, oftentimes we, we would have people use their own, workers use their own cars to go to other fields so that they didn't have to ride, you know, in the same cab. Uh, but in the in the cab of trucks, they absolutely had to wear masks, no question about it. Yeah. And nobody, there's no more crew room. I mean, everybody just at at lunch or 
whatever they just go out in the parking lot and hang out by themselves kind yeah, of. everyone was eating in their cars this year i know it's Bad. like a little tailgate party but yeah. nobody's together no. so when people were working in the field we basically left it up to them when they're in the field um but in other circumstances they had to wear masks because they were in the farm stand or in the vehicles or stuff like that we didn't want the customers to see them without the mask on because we didn't want the customers to think they couldn't wear a mask. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the moment they came near the farm stand, they had to have one on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was the same for us too. Yeah. Um, Chip, if you if you can contact Chris about if they're willing to do something or if or if it doesn't if it feels too much to have people inside the greenhouse, I'm sure that we could get something filmed if, if that would be preferable to them but well you know we have customers come in the greenhouse but it's kind of um you know it's, it's difficult because they're supposed to stay six feet away from each other so yeah. it's hard to do a demonstration inside a greenhouse with a string yeah. of people six feet apart sure. yeah. Yeah. What do you mean with the videos? Is that something uh, that's been done or you have to recruit somebody who can do it or what? So, um, so I've been in touch with um, Phil over at Minuteman Media Network about um, filming uh, the demos and then putting something together. Um, so it doesn't all have to be de you know, demos where people, um, where the public can come. It could be something that is later showed uh, you know, edited together with other demos. Um, so, so if if um, opening up a demo to the public isn't really feasible, that would be another way to still get um, get get in that information out there about about the, their operation. Well, I'll talk to Chris Dooley. I I think the um, video would make more sense in the greenhouse. Sure. Yeah. Great. Um, Steve, will you um, contact, try, try to contact Ricky? Yes, I will. I'll Great. Try to get over there tomorrow while it's fresh in my mind. <laughs> and then, uh, I mean, who else? Do, Saltbox, you think we can get? Melissa, do, would you mind contacting Mark? Uh, I'll email them. Yeah. Um, what about? Um, there? Gaining ground. Oh yeah. Um, there's a new farm manager there who I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I think Fan is often on. Yeah, the, we could yes. probably contact Fan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so maple sugaring. Oh, that'd be great. Steve, we'll, we'll contact Colonial Gardens, too. Okay. Um, Susan McCone and Anthony Rogers, my next door neighbor, they have a whole flock of beautiful looking tractors. Uh, Kubotas, they've got three sizes of Kubotas. Um, they're not particularly thrilled about having retail people around, but um, I could mention it to them and see if they might be interested in a tractor demonstration anyway. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. And if they don't want people coming on there, it could again be just like a pre filmed segment. You know, Susan has quite a um, cut flower thing that's visible from the road. Yeah. And of course, they're all planted early. So the demo could be, you know, here's the planting going in and check in in a month, drive by, and you can see the results, you know. That'd be cool. But, she doesn't does not like people going in and picking their own because she's yeah. all wholesale. Yeah. Great. Have you tried Billy Kenny? I saw you distributed yeah. a yeah, video. I was gonna say, um, yeah, he'd be yeah. I, I, I it sounds like um uh, his foreman's son is was the person who put together that video and he did it looks like he did some other ones as well. So I don't know if he has like a bunch of footage that he could share. I don't know how how Minuteman Media Network feels about using 
other footage if they have like some quality requirements or, um, but yeah, I'll contact um, Beth and see if they, um, they Beth they'll, they'll put anything out as content. Yeah. Yeah, so you can you can just talk to Aaron Stevens. Oh oh oh, a minute media network. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. So I'll contact. Um. Beth, at Kenny Farm about. Um, if they wanted to do a demo or if they just want, you know, are willing to, to share some of the the footage that they've already put together. You know, in a way, if. It, You've got live demos, but you could also have like a um, a menu of of videos that people could pick. Do you want to see what a greenhouse looks like? Do you want to see what Phil, Bill yeah. Kenny, Billy Kenny's doing? Yeah. You know, it wouldn't have to be scheduled. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have like on the Ag Committee website, you know, here's some videos of different farms in Concord doing different things. And then you wouldn't have the um, scheduling thing or the, you know, how do you um, deal with a group of people? Well, his bean picking is one of the most interesting things. That doesn't come to later. Yeah. That might yeah. be a good way to do it. It's from the video. Yes. Yeah. What, what about uh, Mr. Ortondo? Does anybody know how he's doing? I don't. Uh, I can ask Happy to get in touch with him. Are we missing anyone else? We had um, brought up the idea with BJ too when he was here last week or last week, last month about <laughs> time flies, <laughs> um, about uh, something like more historically related ab about, um, but he, he didn't think that they had much um, at the park that would be helpful, he, but maybe at the Concord Museum might have like some old planting tools and someone could film a segment there about. I think Happy was gonna find out about that. Right, okay. Yeah, I'll follow up with Happy about that. You guys should do something with the asparagus because that's, yeah. that's kind of a legacy crop of Concord, I think. Yeah. And you guys have good plantings, right? Yeah. <laughs> We, we should have asparagus during that time. We, we usually do have, uh, one day we have a tour of the asparagus field. People get a chance to taste it. And they're surprised they can eat it raw. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think we have a pretty good start. If folks wouldn't mind putting together like a sentence about what they would like to do for their demo. And it doesn't have to be exactly what you're gonna do, but maybe so that we can share with folks who haven't been at the meetings about, so they can have a, an idea of the types of things that we're doing. Um, and I can share that with other folks that we're trying to recruit to do some demos or some, some film some footage. That's something for next meeting or do you Yeah, yeah. If you can yeah. I think yeah, if maybe um I'll send out a reminder to um yeah, maybe if if like the week before, one week before the meeting, if folks are able to send it in. So um so in three weeks or so, if you can send me in a um just like a sentence about your idea of what you would like to do for a demo. And then I'll I'll put those together before the the meeting and then we can and, and share it with other people who haven't been at the meetings. Uh, does that sound good? Okay, great. Um, and then next meeting we'll flesh out a little bit more, maybe get some a rough calendar of when folks are gonna do things. Does that sound good? 
Before this meeting is over, could I just briefly affirm that this is very interesting material. I mean, the, 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 the public in Concord would very much like to learn something about how these farms happen. And I think that I like very much the idea of in the videos that they really could be done without having a live audience present. Basically the video crew could go out and do short segments in different farms scheduled, however the scheduling ought to be done, but basically, and accumulate these clips. I'm gonna imagine each one might be 10 minutes or something. Uh, and you would have develop a library of interesting, instructive videos uh, for, for the farms in Concord and, and there you are. And it, it, would, it would be, uh, it would be a wonderful thing. And, and it is, these are very good stories you have been telling. Uh, you, you may be boring each other, but it is, <laughs> these are good, you have good storytellers among you. So this is, this is very good. Uh, I, I second Joe. And, and, and one, one, one last thing I'd like to add is I thought that the, uh, uh, the summation of the year of the Agricultural Committee, that report was, was very well done and it told an awful lot in a single page. And it was, it was very informative, it was very well written. And so there we are. That's all I want to say. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> it's good to have that affirmation. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we got good stuff here. Right? It, it, it is, a, it's, it, all this, well, making things grow is a bit of a miracle and, and, and the ways that it happened is interesting. And I don't know. I, yeah. So, there we go. Great. <laughs> well, uh, on that note, should we, are, are we ready to move on to the annual report? Sure. Any, anything else to add to spring form planning? All right. Um, Annual report. Any um, anything that you all feel is missing or needs to be changed in that? Let's open it. Did everyone get a copy of it? There? Yeah, I think everyone's reading over the okay. report. <laughs> <laughs> So are we five members, including the two associates or five members plus two associates? Five members plus, well, I still haven't gotten actually an answer about whether or not we officially are allowed to have two associates. Oh. Um, so I just didn't, I just left it at the five members because what the charge says is five members, the charge doesn't mention associates at all. 
I you want me to look into that? That would be great. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Yeah. Yeah, in my understanding, we had two associates. Yeah. That's that's what I had thought as well. So if that's the case, we then we do have a, a spot for one more associate. Um, because Melissa ha is is one of the associates. Um, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I, I had asked about that in November, but I never, I had, I think the holidays hit and then I <laughs> forgot to follow up again about it. So I think we are allowed to associates, but just because I wasn't positive, I didn't want to include that in the, in the official report. Um, I like the headaches for farmers. I think it's very nicely written. Is there anything that folks feel like we should add or take out? <laughs> should I hand it in as is? I'm fine with your handing it in as is. I, I, I don't see anything I'd add or subtract, but I don't know how other people feel. Steve, did you have a chance to, to look at the report? No. <laughs> I'm still trying to bring my computer back again. Okay. <laughs> uh, that would make it difficult. <laughs> um, I mean, I think I have to submit it. Um, I forget. I think it's next week. So if you want to look at it. Yeah, if you if you want to look at it and if there's anything major that you think needs to be added or any corrections, just let me know. Um, I'll double check on when I need I'm supposed to submit it, but I think I have until next week. Did Emily include corrections in her email about she wrote and said she liked it, so nice. <laughs> the right face. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Back. Yes, I was just saying, Steve, that she, she emailed back and said she approved. Oh, okay. <laughs> Marry a comma out of place? Come on. <laughs> I think now that she's not officially on the committee, she's uh, stepping back from the grammar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, I'll, Steve, I'll wait for you to have a chance to read it and let me know if you have any feedback. And then otherwise, I'll just, I'll submit it. Um, to okay. Okay. Um, other business slash public comment. <laughs> this was fun. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. <laughs> All right. Uh, should we set the next meeting for, so the second Thursday in February is the 11th. Does that work for folks? Looks good. All right. All right. Will you will you repeat that date? February eleventh. I got to make sure I'm looking at twenty twenty one because last time I was still looking at twenty twenty. <laughs> All right. So we'll set it for February eleventh, and then um, so if sometime in the week before that, if folks could try to get in just one sentence by by the fifth, maybe. Um, Can you send a reminder? Yes, I will send a reminder for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And then we could use that um, for when we have to put it on the website and like the link to the sign up. Yeah. Yeah. Get it started. All right. Great. Uh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second it. I said that really weird. Adjourn? <laughs> 
All right. Your All right. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Good night. Thank you. <laughs>